From Hollywood, it's time now for Bob Bailey as... Johnny Dollar. This is Lieutenant Gomez of the Santo Tomas Police Department. Oh, yeah, Lieutenant. I have been trying to reach you for some time. Sorry, I was out making some funeral arrangements. It is about the dead man that I wish to speak to you, senor. Fire away, Lieutenant. What's on your mind? Precisely the question I was about to ask you. What do you mean? Surely I do not need to remind you that Benito Escanza was found dead in your hotel room earlier this evening. You certainly don't. But I've already told one of your cops the whole story. Perhaps. Perhaps not. I suggest that you come to see me so that we can discuss it further. Is that an invitation or an order? Uh, Let us call it an invitation. But if you do not accept, we will have to come and get you. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Santo Tomas, Mexico. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. To the Home Office, Northeastern Fidelity and Bonding, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an account of additional expenses during my investigation of the Alvin Summers $75,000 embezzlement case. (laughs) Item 6, $25 American. Funeral and burial expenses for Benito the Bellboy. Somebody had to do it, and he apparently had no family. After I made the arrangements with the town's undertaker, I went back to my room and received Lieutenant Gomez's polite but firm invitation to drop in on him. So I went on down to police headquarters. Sit down, Senor Dollar. Thanks, Lieutenant. So? So, the autopsy has confirmed the fact that Benito Escanza died from knife wounds. I didn't need an autopsy to tell me that. It was obvious. But what is not obvious is your part in all of this. Look, the story hasn't changed a bit since I told it to your Sergeant Romero. I went back to my room at midnight. I opened my balcony door and enrolled Benito. His throat had been cut. That is the story. As to what is behind the story, that may well be another matter. For instance? For instance, in a case such as this, everyone is a potential suspect. Everyone, including you. Isn't this being pretty ridiculous, Gomez? Is it? Then perhaps you would be kind enough to tell me if there was some legitimate reason Benito had his throat cut in your hotel room. Well, in the first place, if you're interested in alibis, I've got one. Indeed? Indeed. I was with a girl named Gloria Harris up at the Hotel Playa del Mar all evening. You can check that. Oh, you may be quite certain that I am checking on all your activities this evening, senor. In the second place, if you're interested in motives, I don't have one. No? Why would I want to kill Benito when I was hoping to get some information from him? Information of what sort, senor Dollar? Oh, I guess I'd better start at the top, Lieutenant. Here's my card. You are an insurance investigator. That's right. About six months ago, a man named Alvin Summers up in the States embezzled $75,000 from the company he worked for. The outfit I'm representing in the deal wrote the bond on him, so they were stuck for the money. $75,000. A couple of days ago, they got a long-distance phone call from down here in Santo Tomas. The man who called claimed that he had information about Alvin Summers. That's why I came down here. Now, who was the man who telephoned? We don't know. I came on the chance that he might contact me here, or that I might get some kind of lead on Alvin Summers' whereabouts. And have you? No, on both counts. Benito said he knew about a place where Summers used to live. He was going to take me there tonight. But apparently somebody had other ideas. And a knife to back them up. I see. And uh, nobody has tried to contact you? Oh, sure, sure. Several people have. But always for the wrong reason. First, there was a man named Carson, a zipper salesman. He contacted me for the purpose of setting up a cribbage game. Cribbage? What is this cribbage? Now, that's something I hope I never find out. Hmm? Then there was a strong arm who bounced me around with a gun barrel and suggested politely that I wanted to leave town. Oh? Uh, What did he look like? Well, he was heavy in the shoulders, thick neck, low forehead, short dark hair, scar over the bridge of his nose. Scar? That would be Senor Kraus. You know him? I know him by sight. Who is he? What's his pitch? That is something I do not know. Senor, you must understand that Santo Tomas is a rather strange town and a dangerous one. Come in. Hey, Lieutenant. Can't you see that I'm busy, Sergeant Romero? Uh, What is about, Senor Dollar? Oh. Well, uh, what is it? Well, 
I have talked to a senorita, Gloria Harris, at the Hotel Playa del Mar. She said that Senor Dalla was with her throughout the evening. <laughs> Very well, Romero. Uh, one thing more, we have just arrested a man, an uh, American tourista, uh, uh, Senor Carson. I will talk to him when I have time. Hey, wait a minute. That's the zipper salesman I was telling you about. Indeed? Yeah. Hey, look, maybe he ties into this deal after all. What's the charge? Romero? Uh, it's uh, disturbing the fish. Oh, great. Just when I thought I had a lead. What's the matter? He got a few too many under his belt, maybe? Well, Romero? Uh, here, here's the report. The Senor Carson is outside. Gracias. That will be all. Uh, I will talk to the man. Si, sí, uh, Senor Donald? If you know this man, perhaps you had better come with me. Okay. Dollar! Say, I'm sure glad to see you. Hiya, Carson. What seems to be the trouble? Well, it, it wasn't as much as they made a dollar. A fella goes out stepping. Sometimes he, well, well, you know. Yeah, he steps a little too far. Well, I was only having a little fun. Senor Carson, this report states that you are at the Hotel Playa del Mar this evening. Uh, that's right. But now, Lieutenant... It further what... states that you became increasingly noisy and that at one point, during a dance by an entertainer... You grabbed the serape from one of the musicians and attempted to join in the dance. Now, now, Lieutenant, maybe I was a little out of line, but I... Further, I... that when the dancer refused to dance with you, you chased her around the patio several times. Trying to sell her a zipper, maybe? Oh, no, Dollar, let up on a guy, will you? And that finally, when the musician attempted to get his serape away from you, you broke his guitar over his head. Say, when you get going, you're a real tiger, aren't you? Are these things true, Senor Carson? Well, I, I suppose the facts are correct, but they sound different somehow down here. I was just trying to have a little fun, you know. See, uh, Sergeant Romero will conduct you to the magistrate. Romero! A dollar, you're just going to stand there and not do anything? After all, we both live at the same hotel, and... And? And? Oh, you're a big help. What'll happen to him, Lieutenant? Oh, you will have to pay the damages, and there will be a fine. Which will probably go on his expense account. Lieutenant, you started to tell me about this Beetlebrow Krauss who put a few dents in me. I started to say that before the people from Mexico City built the new hotel, this town, unfortunately, used to be something of a haven for undesirable characters from the United States. Fugitives, huh? Some of them still remain. And although I know very little about Senor Krauss, it is probable that he is one of them. Could be. You say that he and Senor Carson are the only ones who have made any effort to contact you? Yeah, except for Gloria Harris, of course. I still haven't found out what's on her mind. Hmm? I mean, what else is on her mind. She says she's down here on a vacation. Indeed. In that case, it has certainly been a long vacation. What do you mean? She's been here for several months, to my knowledge. Well, well. Now, that's very interesting, Lieutenant. Thanks. Anything else you want to ask me about, Benito? Uh, not at uh, the moment, but I suggest you remain available. You know where to find me. One moment, Senor Dollar. Hmm? A uh, word of warning. As I told you, this town can be a dangerous place. I would suggest that you be quite careful. Yeah, yeah. And uh, one thing I wish to impress upon you. If you are at any time tempted during your investigation to take the law into your own hands... I assure you that you will regret it. Well, in that case, I hope you're around when and if I need you. Whether or not I am available, the warning still applies. Okay. Be seeing you. Johnny. Wow, Gloria. I thought you were tucked in for the night. I couldn't sleep, so I called your hotel. Oh? They told me that the bellboy had been murdered, that you were at the police station, so I came down here. Is there anything I can do? Not for Benito, I'm afraid. He was killed in your room? Yeah. You think he could have been killed by mistake? Mistake? You mean maybe I was supposed to be the target? Hey, it's a thought. Johnny, you're in trouble of some kind. I wish you'd tell me what it is. You're not just down here on a vacation. Speaking of vacations, Gloria, let's... Johnny, what is it? Keep looking straight ahead. There's somebody across the street in the shadows. He's tailing us. Can you see who it is? When he goes past that light, I'll be... Well, what do you know? My old friend Krauss again. You mean the man who came to your room and was looking for you on the beach? That's the boy. Funny how he always seems to pop up when I'm with you. Johnny, I tell you, I don't know Doesn't him. Doesn't matter right now. Come on. 
Turn into the alley here. Okay. Now keep going straight down this alley and out the other end. Go back to your hotel and I'll call you there later. I may be a while. What are you going to do? Wait for him. No, John. Look, Gloria, don't give me any argument this time. Get going. After she was out of sight, I ducked into a doorway. Then I waited. Yeah, Krauss was following all right. I waited until he got right up to me. And I dove at him. You! That's right, me. Drop the gun. Drop it. Yeah, this time I'm ready for you, sweetheart. Funny thing about me, Krauss. I don't like guys working over me with a gun barrel ever. All right. Now you're going to tell me what this is all about. Why you've been tailing me. Why you worked me over with a gun barrel in my room last night. I want to hear all about it. You know why. Talk. I said talk. You're not taking me back. Taking you back? I know you came down here after me, but I ain't going back. What are you talking about? I know what happens to a three-time loser. Three-time loser? You want me back home, you got to carry me. Hey, wait a minute. You ever hear of a man named Alvin Summers? Oh? How about Gloria Harris? No, no, no. You sure about that, Cross? <laughs> Look, don't. Look, I'm telling you the truth. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you are. You're too punchy right now to give me a routine. Yeah, I think I get it. You're wanted in the States. You figured I was a cop and came down here to make a pinch. Brother, right now, I sure wish I was. I mean, you... No, I'm no cop. Oh. You say you made a mistake. You sure did, Buster. Um, no hard feelings? Oh, no, no, not at all. I just love the feel of a gun barrel whipping across my face. Krauss, I got a nice little piece of advice for you. Next time, you better find out what the score is before you jump into the ball game. <laughs> I left him there in the alley and went back to my hotel. Then, just as I was about to open the door to my room, I heard someone moving around inside. I went quietly down to the end of the hall, out the window, then eased along the balcony back toward my room. Inside it was dark, but I could make out someone bent over my luggage, searching it. I edged across the room, slowly. Then I lunged. Ah! Hello, Gloria. Johnny. Yeah, Johnny. Helping me unpack, maybe. Look, I, uh, I can explain, Johnny. You know something? That's just exactly what you're going to do. There'll be another exciting episode in our story of the Alvin Summers matter tomorrow. Tomorrow night, how to fall into a trap... In one easy lesson. John is, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood, written by Robert Reif. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking.